Well, today I thought I'd again tackle a simple subject. And that subject today is how to deal with change. Here's something that I know. Until you change, nothing changes. You are seeing life through the filters in front of your eyes. And you're the person who can leave those filters in or you can change those filters, which changes the way you look at life. Understand that life is an adventure. And for it to be an adventure, there must be change. Think about that. Without change, there is no contrast. Without contrast, there is no experience. So if you ever, if you can go in your own mind and, and really think about when were you on an adventure that you were really engaged in it, you realize that you had to be flexible, that you couldn't be doing the way th your habits had dictated. You had to adjust. You had to become different. You had to change. So here's an important thing to understand. Whether you are aware of it or not, you are the adventure. Do you get that? You are the adventure. Where are your thoughts? They are the adventure. What habits do you have? They can create or they can stop the adventure. Who do you associate with? It can create this adventure or that adventure. And I'm not judging an adventure as something as good or bad. That's not mine to do. I believe that every experience in life is for the purpose of making us more aware. The more aware we become, the greater we can create a new adventure. The more we can embody that new experience, the greater we become in our level of awareness and we have a bigger adventure. I believe that life is eternally about creating greater and greater and greater adventures. But here's the key thing. It all begins within you. Your job is to believe in you because that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if you believe in your mom and your dad. It doesn't matter if you believe in your partner. It doesn't matter if you believe in your children. It doesn't matter if you believe in the Dallas Cowboys. None of that matters. What really matters is you believing in you. Do you believe you're healthy or do you believe you're sick? Do you believe you're wealthy or do you believe you're poor? Do you believe you're loving or do you believe you're not lovable? Do you believe that you can have infinite possibilities in front of you and you are free to choose? Or do you believe that life is limited? Do you believe that you are smart or do you believe that you are dumb? Your belief creates and it doesn't matter what anyone else believes about you. It only matters what you believe because you are the master of your life. You are both the producer, the director, the camera person, and you are the lead actor in your life. And everyone else is a secondary character that will fit the script that you write in your mind. And as you change the script, some of the characters in your movie may move on and new ones will come in. Or some of the characters in your movie may change because the energy you're putting out is causing a change within them. You see, you have to choose you in every situation. What is the highest expression for you? And you're going to say, well, Lee, that's narcissistic. No, I'm not saying to choose you at the expense of anyone else. You can choose you and no matter what it is, you can be kind in how you respond. You can be open and supportive of others as you choose you. Are you following where I'm coming from? Sometimes it's not what you do, 
but how you do it. You can say things to people in one tone of voice and get one response, and in another tone, get another response. Here's the key question. When you're in your own mind, are you choosing you? Or are you not choosing you by judging you? You see, we are our own worst critic. We judge ourselves. Instead of just seeing where we are, accepting it and saying, okay, let's start a new adventure. Let's move forward. One of the th key things is about infinite possibilities and their availability to us. You can't believe in possibility until you believe in yourself. Do you notice there's a common theme here? Everything begins and ends with you. That's why at Agape we teach that you are 100% responsible for your life experience. And we teach how to better self-love through conscious living. Because it's in conscious living where you choose your beliefs. Because we understand that your beliefs create your experience. But most of the time, we're wandering around without beliefs that are serving us. We've not chosen them. We've arbitrarily accepted others' beliefs. I'm inviting you to consider stepping out. Stepping out and being your unique self and only judge where you are by asking the question, am I being me, my unique self? There's a beautiful song that I heard for the first time last week, um, Love My Life by Robbie Williams. And the lyrics are, I love my life. I am powerful, I am beautiful, and me, and free. I love my life. I am wonderful, I am magical, and I am me. When they say magical, what that means is you know there's infinite possibilities and you know the secret to the magic. The magic is to be you, to be me. And when you do that, all you'll know is that you're happy to be you. The key thing is to believe in you, you have to first know who you are. I can tell you that you're an individualization of infinite consciousness that has been given perfect freedom to do and create whatever experience they want. But here's the other thing that I don't know. I don't know what's in your spiritual DNA that juices you, that lights you up, that you're on this planet to express. Only you know that. And that's something that's worth investigating. That's one of the things we do at Agape. We teach the values process where when you go through this process, at the end of it, you'll know the top three to five things that are most important to you. And then you make and base all of your decisions, your beliefs on serving those top things things. There are two ways to deal with change in my mind. One is to resist. And guess what? That's not going to have a good outcome. If you're resisting change, you're going to be one miserable, sick, poor person. The other is to move with it. How you move with it, that's your choice. You move with it so that you move with it with your values in place, knowing what your high, highest three values are, and you move with it, making decisions. Okay, here's the change. How do I respond? How do I deal with it, knowing what's most important to me? If you go to the doctor, and the doctor gives you a diagnosis, and let's just say it's high blood pressure, you can resist doing anything and then the high blood pressure will have an impact on your health. Or you can accept that this is my diagnosis and you move with it by saying, can I change some of my eating? Can I change some of the way I respond to things? Maybe I might consider building a meditation practice into my life. 
Maybe it's a combination of eight or nine things. Because when your blood pressure gets high, it's the universe telling you you have too much stress. With too much stress, it could be you put on extra weight. It may not be extra weight. Maybe you're smoking. Maybe you're doing other things. I don't know. But when you get that type of thing, you adjust. When I got the diagnosis that I had a small brain tumor in 2000, I could have resisted and not done anything. I chose to address it. I chose to change. I changed my diet. I, put in, I implemented meditation into my life. I got physically um, exercise. I used my spiritual tools of visualization. And a year later, the tumor was gone. If you want the whole story and want to know how I dealt with it, it's in my book. My book's title is The Power in You. And you can find it on Amazon. 16 chapters of powers that you can use that exist within you that you can use to deal with change. My friends, I say this with all the love in my heart. Change happens when you decide to be different and become a new person. I look at it this way. Picture you're creating an avatar, an image of yourself that you want to be. You put the qualities in, the physical qualities. You put the mental qualities in that you desire. And then you visually see yourself stepping into the avatar. And when you step into that avatar, you become it. You see, change is always happening when we decide to change. The question we must ask ourselves is if we are to change, am I willing to leave behind? What am I willing to leave behind? to create the new me. Because in order to change, something's got to go. Something has to be left behind. You got to make room for the new. And in order to make room for the new, you got to see it that it's valuable. And I want you to embed this mantra into your mind for the next week, maybe for the rest of your life. Just sit for a moment, open your mind, and hear these five words. Until you change, nothing changes. Until you change, nothing changes. Be the change you want to see in the world, and your life will be a blessing everyone.